Hey, I'm Janaid. I'm 32 years old. I'm from North London. Uh, my sexual orientation is hetero. I like girls. I like girls a lot. And I'm a health and fitness consultant. Uh, all right, so aesthetically, uh, I prefer the bum. I'm a bum guy. Um, I can appreciate a nice set of breasts. Um, I guess what we're talking about personality-wise, uh, she just got to be cooperative. You know, um, these are trying times, you know, in life we're living. We've got cost of living crisis. We've got you less spreading everywhere. I just need not someone that's cooperative. So as fast as the world is changing, I'm going to change because I'm going to adapt to my environment. And I just need a woman that's cooperative. Um, in my experience, I've dealt with a lot of women who don't necessarily like change. You know, if I do, uh, if I have a certain pattern, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the moment I switch it up, I've changed. Well, I, I've had to change, but so that I can't spend all my time with you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday no more. There's a higher calling for me. So you might just get Saturday and Sunday. You know, that's just an example. But I think the cooperative woman, as I change, she got to be okay or be able to roll with those changes as well. Okay, so this is going back, I'm going to say maybe, what, seven, seven years old? Um, eh, eh. So back in the 90s, um, everybody had cable, but then you could get your watch chipped. And if you, well, then that means you've got all the channels, including the naughty ones. If you go past Channel 30, because Channel 30, I think, was a uh, carbon network. 27 was Nickelodeon, Ray, Ray. You go past that, you get the naughty channels and whatnot at night. Just discover it by accident. And you know the remote, it had the undo or reverse and go back to the last channel, last button, boom, just tap it in case someone catches you. Um, so that was my first understanding of sex. But um, even on TV, they never actually showed like a dick going inside the vagina. Um, it was very, just like two bodies touching, two bodies come together and whatnot. And that's what I understood was sex, you know? Um, that's the reason why I bring up this story is because the first time I actually tried to have sex, I tried to do it like I saw on TV. It was just two bodies coming together. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know how it got in there, where it got in there or anything. I just went by my first recollection of sex and it, it was that. It was just two bodies coming together, rubbing. You know, even before having sex, uh, we was doing the dry, dry hunting thing as well. And again, it had nothing to do with where the location of the vagina was or anything. Didn't even know what fingering was. Yeah, yeah, pretty uh, low level of understanding of sex. My first crush. Okay, so it was this girl named Lisa. So I was I was at three, four years old, and I was going nursery. Um, I didn't understand what nursery was at at the time. Not fully anyway. I didn't know that. Like, we, like I, it was just a place I was going to. And then I see this girl every day. And then every time, so I was like, oh, no, she's lovely. She's amazing. Oh. Um, I swear this is like a genetic thing. Like men are just ge genetically disposed to being like shy around women. I don't know how at three years old I knew what being shy I was. Anyway, I used to um, try to play with her like every break time, try to draw with her. Anytime I was doing drawing, try to sit next to her or anything like this. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason why I say genetically thing, because she must have felt like the creep in me. I've approached her one time. I haven't even said nothing, but she just knew, like, the top of, she just knew it was instinct. See me walking towards her, and I was walking to where she was. And she was, I don't love you, I love Fabian. Fabian was the boy in nurse. He had, like, green eyes or something. Like, he was tall, like, three years old. I'm assuming he was three, like, he was four. He was a four-year-old. Um, but yeah, he had green eyes or something like this, but yeah, that, that was the end of my crush right there. Yes, I definitely remember my first kiss. Um, so I must have been maybe what, 12, maybe 13. Um, this is like during the summer holidays. Now, me getting a kiss from a girl's school was never going to happen or whatnot. Like, that shy thing stayed with me for a very long time. Like, Going up to go, I, I like you. It just wasn't in me. So I think that was supposed to be in like year seven or year eight. I think it was year seven, whatever. And it was during the summer. 
was playing out, I was with my cousins and some guys um, from their state and whatnot, and I was playing. And I mean, if you know, you know, there's always that one girl in the state that's just, she just wants to help, help people out, innit? You know, it gets to a certain time, you go around the block, line of boys and whatnot. And, you know, like week one, it was just like, oh, she'll hug everyone and kind of touch her and whatnot. Week two, she'd given out kisses. And then, you know, that's when I graduated from the school um, where we started kissing or whatnot. Um, the thing that grossed me out was that I just, all I knew the kiss was, was just this lips touching and whatnot. But she French kissed the head out. I mean, I'm, like, I'm 12, she's been like 16 or something like that. Yeah, that there, yeah, that was yeah, that messed with my head. I didn't go back, but like as the weeks progress, you you hear stories about what went down and whatnot, and it was just like, yeah, you know, you just not ready for that. Oh, first girlfriend. Um, I don't. I'm not. So I'm not gonna count the one in school because we it that it, to me it didn't count. You know. Um, so the first. Real relationship was a girl, her name was Nima. She knows who she is. Um, yeah, the, the crazy thing about it is we got together about a week or a day before I was leaving to go to another country. I was going to go play basketball and whatnot. Um, she was a bit apprehensive about the thing because I'm going to another country. Um, um, but she was certainly not. I went to another country, came back for Christmas break, but we was talking all that time. As I'm going back, um, we spent some time over Christmas break. She was a bit apprehensive about the whole situation. She's like, oh, you just want me here, you know, so that when you come back, I'm here and stuff like this. I was like, no, I really like her, I really like her. And I did, I did really like her and whatnot. Um, but nonetheless, we got together and then I went back. And I said to her, I was like, don't let me leave. And then when I leave, you find out this isn't what you want to do. And then you want to break up with me. She done exactly that. Um, but we still kept in touch. When I came back for Easter, at like the end of the season, um, we started seeing each other again and, and we got back together. Um, it was, uh, yeah, it was a, a very complicated situation and whatnot. But that was my first girlfriend. I think she had a boy, I, I know. She had a boyfriend before me, so she knew what the whole relationship thing was like, that they were together like two years. I hadn't even had a girlfriend at this point or whatnot, and I'm like 19. Um, so then we're together for the whole summer. The new season's coming along, and I'm getting ready to leave. This time I'm leaving. Where am I going? I'm going to Serbia this time. Um, and yeah, we break up. I think, no, this time is my fault. Yeah, yeah, she always... So she would say that like I cheated on her, I didn't, I broke up with her and then got with someone else, but that like, we're not gonna go back and forth about this. Um Yeah, so she was a couple of years younger than me. So I was at like, nineteen, she was seventeen. At this point I'm twenty, she's eighteen. Um she's going off to uni and I'm going off to play basketball and stuff. It's, it's it just I wanted something else in that I didn't yeah, I didn't want that anymore. Um, but we broke up, it was real bad. I got with someone else. That ended terribly. But my first girlfriend and I, we still kept a good relationship. Um, after I came back from playing basketball, uh, we talked. We never really, we never got back together. But we, we maintained a healthy friendship and whatnot. Um, even to this day, I think I, I spoke to her about a few months ago or nothing, or something like that. Nothing. It was just like I seen her open pass. Um... She, one thing we've taken away from our time together is she never forgot that the, the positive effect I had in her life. She very well remembers me cheating on her. I, I don't think I cheated on her. Uh, you guys can tell me if I cheated on her, but I don't think I did. Um, but she also remembers that the positive impact I had in her life. And I, in turn, remember the positive impact she had in my life. Um... Whenever we talk, it's always a good time as well. We always seem to uplift one another. Uh, but yeah, first relationship. I'm not going to say it was like the best or the worst or anything like this, but it was definitely the most. Like, I, I still have a... There's girls I've met in between her that I, I have nothing to do with them at all. 
Um, if they call me for brown sugar, I'm not even give it to her. I've got time. For you always remember your first. Um, so just to clarify, I never lost my virginity to my first girlfriend. So um, it was, I had, anyway, so this is how it happened. Uh, I lost my virginity, I, I think I was 16 years old. Um, I was lying about it for a year, innit? Like, or maybe longer. I think I told people, hey, I lost it at 14. No, 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 this is the one you can take to the bank. I was 16 years old. Um, it's crazy because at the time people said I was a late bloomer, but looking back, like that's still pretty young, but that's a conversation for another time. So anyway, we had just, um, I was with my boys. We had just won a basketball game. So we was all feeling good. One of my friends in the coach, um, he had a link. He was linking one girl. I think she lived far, like half a shell, wherever. And she was coming to the area of North London. And she said, oh, yeah, but our cousin's house, we're, we're, we're just chilling. Um, like, I want you to come see me, but my cousin's going to be left alone. You know what that means. And he's like, oh, I'm with my boys right now. Duh, 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 duh. I goes, oh, but which one? Like, I don't know if she's going to like them. Was it? I, he said, I'll ask. The reason why I love this story is because um, my boy goes, oh, man, then, she's got a friend who wants to come. And it was like me and my other friend, we said, we both said, us, 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 us. As well as, well, I've got two. And said, I'll put them on the phone, let her talk to them, and we'll see what on. He went first. Like, he got on the phone first. And, like, he was on the phone for bare long time. Anyway, so when I came on the phone, remember, this is why, you know, when you just got it, I was 16 years old. I've never had sex before. I've never had a girlfriend before. I don't even think, oh, well, I might have like, done that like, couple things, but yeah, I don't know. I just came in, just natural talk. Hi, I'm this, I'm that. Yeah, yeah. I think I might have slipped in there. Like, I'm the best player on the team as well, so, which I was. You can Google that. Um, and then, yeah, she said, yeah, I'm going to choose my baby, Janaid. And she, she chose me. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we went to the house, went and linked. Um, my boy, he's just like, yeah, da -da 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 -da. you know how it goes, blah, 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 blah. Um, had, had some condoms with me. You know, they give you condoms in school and stuff like this. You carry them around so people think you haven't said so born had it. Always had them on me. Um, we get to the house. We're sitting in the living room. I said to... My girl's name, uh, Monique, 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 where, but she was gorgeous, uh, gorgeous, brown skin, curly hair, uh, that. Um, I said, yo, do you know, what's your movie? She was, oh, the DVD plays in my room. I knew that because I looked in front and was like, oh, there's no DVDs playing. And I was like, all right, cool. Oh, for the new generation, DVD plays is what we used to watch movies on before Netflix was created. But anyway. So then we went to the bedroom and she pulled out that five or six films and whatnot. I said, yeah, just that one thing on. And then um, it was the craziest thing because in my mind, I said, all right, cool. We'll lay down, we'll watch the film. First we'll cuddle, first we, I had a whole play in my mind or whatever. As soon as I said to her, I said, like, you know, you can relax, like you sit on the bed. I said, sit on the bed. I said, you can sit on the bed. She said, okay, boom, she sits down on the bed, starts kissing her. Cool. Laying down, lips and up, but undressing each other. I'm like, right, like, okay, so like it's it's about to happen now. So I put my condom on and I'm trying to find it. You know what I'm trying to find, right? I'm trying to find where to put it. Um, remember I said earlier, I thought it was like that. Nah, let's go a bit further down. Anyway, put it in. And yeah, it was crazy experience because so nobody told me what sex was like. I've never had, I've never went. Nobody told me what sex is like. No one told me what to expect in it. So I'm just like doing what I remember. Okay, so I'm inside, I guess I just go in and out. So I'm thrusting, thrusting in and out. And I don't know what to expect. I did not know what having an orgasm was like. So as we're, as we're doing it now, my body starts feeling different. I'm like, wait, what's this? And then boom, it happens. Like, I couldn't be, like, I had to play on like I was a gangster in it, yeah. Anyway, it happens. In my head, I'm screaming, yes, oh gosh, this feeling's incredible. It went, and this head, I was just like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go to the bathroom and clean up. 
my phone with me, took a picture, I sent it to the boy who was on the coach of us that tried to get the number, didn't get it. Um, when I linked him later on that day, he was like, no, nah. I was telling him what happened. He's like, no, nah, that's just super more on the floor. Yeah, I remember that day where he cleared it. But yeah, that was my first issue with having sex. So yeah, home, my, my first triumph ever. And like, yeah, I think it lasted all of like probably like five or 10 minutes or something like that. Yeah, you do, like my first time, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even know how I was going to climax or anything like that. So yeah, it was probably like five or 10 minutes or something like that. Do do it. Dari, I don't even know if she enjoyed it. I mean, she must have because I saw her again. But, I mean, if she found it pleasurable, if she climaxed or anything like that, it's curious. So, my first heartbreak, it would be my first girlfriend. Uh, I described how we got together and came apart, but so she broke up with me. I think I was a week in France or something like that. She said, yeah, this isn't going to work. Um, I don't know why. I can guess she probably had that like, friends in the air or something like this. I don't know what she thought I was doing in France, but like I was literally waking up playing basketball from dusk to dawn and whatnot. But for whatever reason, she broke up with me. Uh, so she couldn't do it no more. Long distance was hard on the side. This is another thing as well. So she wanted to practice celibacy. So that when we got together, she was like, I'm a Christian, let's practice celibacy. And I said, all right, cool, I'm down for that. Because I actually really liked her. I really liked her. Um, and when I tell that other girls this story, they said, oh, would you do that for me? I'm like, nah. And so because I don't like them, it's just what I took from that is, all right, I conformed for something that I really liked and I did it. It wasn't beneficial, not just for me, for both parties. It weren't beneficial. So let me stand by things that I want, things that I'm going to get out of this relationship or whatever. And that way I have a choice. She has a choice to walk away. So no more conforming. But anyway, um, for a relationship where we're not being physical we're, and we just met each other as well, a long distance relationship was kind of, I thought it was better. Because we can talk all day. When I finish practice, we can talk. We can Skype. Skype is FaceTime back in 2000 and, um, 2009. We did have FaceTime back then. Um, so we, yeah, they said we can Skype, we can talk. Weren't enough. And she broke up with me. It really hurt because for, for two reasons. One, I told her, don't do it. I said, don't say you're going to get with me while I'm here in London. And when I leave, you don't want to be with me. So that was like, okay, cool. That's that betrayal right there. And her as well, because yeah, I really liked her. You don't, that's not something you want to hear. But I was around, I was around a lot of competitive basketball players. So every morning we're waking up, um, yeah, we didn't have a day off. And when I say like a day off, I'm not mean like a day off from practice. I mean, you didn't have a day off just to go half at it. Like, we're doing drills. Oh, I can score my point. I can score my layups in you. Um, we're playing games. I'm my team can beat your team. We're running. I'm far sitting. Everything is a freaking competition, and it's like you don't get an hour, you know, down to waking up in the morning. Oh, I'm up before you. Excuse me. I'm awake before you. I'm I'm getting more reps in you. So after she broke up with me, as much as it hurt, I think it it hurt. I think it took. I think I took that with me until I saw her again when I came on at the end of the season. But it didn't really affect me because, again, I was around a bunch of competitive basketball players that just never gave me no time off. It's just like you think, oh, let me sit down and be in my feelings about a girl that didn't want me. He's like, oh, no, we've got to go spread. We've got to do some sprints. Oh, we've got to go to the gym. Oh, we've got to, we've got to play scrimmage. Oh, we've got to play a game. Like, it was just too... It was too competitive to not do that. Um, one of the skills I learned from playing basketball was being disciplined in that manner is, okay, as soon as I walk through these doors and I'll, or I'm in the gym or whatever, I'm here. And if I've got going outside of these doors, it's beyond my control. That's not what I'm... So let me take care of what I'm in control of. 
I do you know what that said, man, I think I became, you know, an even better player because of that breakup. My last relationship, uh, why didn't it work out? Okay, so my last relationship was with my child's mother. Um, anyone that has children, well, I don't know if they know this, but when you have children in a relationship, it changes the relationship. And if you're not, like, conscious of it or aware of it, or even prepared for it, you know, I feel like we were two people that went into the relationship, you know, we both wanted the kids and whatnot, but did we want each other? And there's a there's a significant difference that I had to learn, but I learned whilst doing it. And I'll say this, if we didn't have a child, we would have broken up because we weren't compatible with each other. Because we had a child, it just brought to the surface those things a lot sooner than later. Um, what could I have done to strengthen it? I don't know. I feel like if I was, like, I had a child, my, my daughter was born when I was 24, um, my son at 25. If I was a little bit older, or not necessarily older, but if I was a bit more aware of the dynamics of a relationship. Um, when I say the dynamics of a relationship, the role I have to be as uh, a boyfriend, a uh, potential husband, the role I have to be as a father. If I was aware of those things um, in regards to how do I give her what she needs, not necessarily what she wants, because we all have an idea, a general idea of what women want. But what do they what do they actually need in order to be happy in a relationship? If I was a bit more aware of that, because I'll just wing it. Then when I hear something like, oh, I want to have a child. Okay, do you want my child or do you need my child? You want my child. All right, cool. So you want my child. Do you want me? Because those are two completely different things that like you can have one or the other, or you can have both. But the two are not mutually exclusive. I wasn't educated enough to understand that. So when I hear oh, I want a child, I automatically think, oh, you want me too. And if it's, oh, no, I just want a child. Okay, to serve what purpose? So if I, talking about stroking the relationship with the relationship last time, girl. If I was a bit more clued up, if I was a bit more aware of what a woman wants versus what they need, then I could have made that relationship maybe last a little bit longer. I'd say, okay, maybe now's not the time for a child. I don't think you should have a child with someone just because they look good or they will be a good parent. I think you should have a child. I think a child should be a product of love. So if you wanted a child with me now, then, okay, how many children will not want me when you want me to? Type of thing. I like this question. Um, I, off the back, I'm going to tell you I'm paying for any date that I go with the first or last. Who should pay for it? Um, who shouldn't pay for it? Okay, so why are two single people going on dates in the first place? Uh, when we understand why he wants to go on a date, why she wants to go on a date, then we can sort of figure out who pays. Generally speaking, he's gone on a day to get to know you, to sleep with you. She's gone on a day to get to know you, have a nice night out, you know, be spoiled, be treated like a princess. Um, let's call a spade a spade. If we're going to use dating as a prerequisite to have sex, if you are a woman and you're going on a, on a date with a man and you do not want to sleep with him, don't let him spend on you. I'm not saying if he spares on you, you have to give him sex. But I feel like you shouldn't give any ammunition to your opposition. Point in case, if I'm from North London, I'm a young black man from North London, I have no business walking in the estates of South London, somewhere I'm not from, with a hood up and my hand down my waist. And be and be shocked when someone approaches me, asks me, asks me a question, where are you from? I shouldn't be shocked when that happens. 
if at, like we we are aware of the society that we're in, we're aware of that the the neighborhood we're in, the culture that we're in, and so on and so forth. I feel like we should make educated decisions. And if you're a woman and you're going on a date with a man and you don't want the man, if you don't want the man to ask you for sex, press you for sex, put you in this scenario where sex could be sex could happen, hey. Now he has less ammunition to get you to be like, oh well, I took you out, I showed you a good time, I paid for the day. Come on, man, there's something oh no. This is just I mean, we went out, we had a good time. It was at none of our expenses. We just got to know each other a little bit better. I feel like paying for the day is just part of the problem. You know, um, if you go back to his house, if you go anywhere where the logistics allow sex, I feel like, okay, you are serving, you are giving him more ammunition to want to sleep with you and be upset when you say no. If you don't want him upset with you, go out, go out early, split the bill, don't even split the bill. Just pay for yourself. And don't go back to no intimate spots. I remember I went out, I went out with a girl once. And the day had finished. She drove to me and then we got in my car and we went to the venue. When we got back to mine, I said, Do you want to go back in for a drink? Um, she said, No, I had a lovely time with you though. I said, You sure? No, she's like, it's late. I'll go home. Anyway. I asked her later on, as we got comfortable, I said, yo, why didn't you come in back? When I asked you the first time, she said, was that, because I knew it would lead, and I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to go there so soon. I said, all right, cool, I respect that. Because as much as you like me, if you don't want it to go there, don't go into logistics in which that allows and starts with paying for the date. So like I said, I'm going to pay for every date I go on. Not because I'm in sex, not because that I'm a gentleman and I feel like if I ask you for your time, I should pay for it. Time is expensive. At the same time, women, be aware. You feel like the guy you're going out with is potential creep card, don't give him no ammunition, just pay for your day. Drive in separate cars. Thank you at the end of the night and then go home. If you want the conversation to continue after the day, get on the phone, FaceTime, text, whatever. But take it slow. Man there, if you're going out on a date and she's paying, it's not going to happen. She's not into you. Take that as a sign. And yeah, do what you want with that information. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, sex is very important to me in a relationship. Um, sex is the only thing that separates us you know, from being a couple to being very good friends. Um, a friend is someone you can rely on, depend on, and you can get to business with, you can even buy property together. You know, the only thing that's very similar to a relationship, the only difference would be sex. You could say living together, oh, no, you have flat hate to start your friends. You could say, um, you can't even read you, you can't even read the, the things that you talk about because you even have secrets of your best friends as well that I can I'm pretty sure the only thing that separates two friends and a couple is sex. Um for so that that's how you that that's how you have your soul ties together, you know. You sleep with each other. Yeah, I mean, does the sex have to be good? I believe so. Um, but good is a perspective thing. What's good for me might be bad for someone else. But then I feel like that's what you know, that's what you do while you're dating, while you're getting to know each other, while you find out what one person likes, what other person dislikes. I'm not just exclusively talking about sets, it could be anything else. Everything before sets, you know, um you know, women are sexually attracted to men before sex even happens. So, like, are you the physical stature that they like? Are you, do you smell, like, attractive to them? And all those things that, um, I never wore cologne for a very long time. Um, one of the older women uh, that I work with, she said, oh, try this, try this, and whatever. Anyway, so now I wear cologne, and I've noticed the difference is that everywhere I go, oh, 
you smell nice. Oh, you smell nice. And it's like, oh, okay. So this is the whole point is building attraction. If you don't smell nice, if you don't look right, how good is the set going to be? Like, are you going to make it that far? So I feel like, again, whilst you're getting to know your partner and anything, these are just things that, you know, just make the, the set better and in turn make the relationship stronger. Sex is very important in relationships. If you're not having sex, you don't have a relationship, you have a friendship. Really? Sexual fantasies. So that, so at first it was actually having sex, done that. After that it was, what, that having oral sex, did that. Um, I think what most men kind of like, in regards to like sexual fantasies, what they yearn for the most is probably like a threesome. Um, but for the life of me, I never understood how does that actually happen and whatnot. Um, you know, when you talk about like a woman that is sexually attracted to you, she tends to be stingy, you know. Um, if you like another post on Instagram, that's a problem. So how is she ever going to share you with another woman in the, in the same bedroom and whatnot? Um, but yeah, I learned kind of the easy way that, like, uh, as a man, you don't really set that up. She's got to set that up. She's got to want it, first of all. She got set up, and I actually was set up. Uh, <laughs> um, my experience of a free so it was, yeah, it was strange. Um, I actually went to go meet a woman. Uh, this one a woman I was in a relationship with. This is what I call a long-term understanding. So we had a long-term understanding with each other. We see each other, we go out with each other, um, but we're not in a relationship. Is what it is. Um, yeah, so I went to see her. I went to pick up our mates, and I pulled up, and she goes, "Oh, I just park. We just ordered food." I'm like, "Alright, cool." And when the food comes, you get my car. You can eat my car. No, we're gonna go inside the flat and eat food. I'm like, "Okay, oh, cool. go inside, eat the McDonald's." Um, and she comes on to me. She comes on to me, and her friends right there. I'm just like. Food for kind of bad for the friend. And she's like, oh no, she's it's all right. Her friend is coming, so I'm like, oh, another dude I don't know coming here. This is a bit, it's a bit mad. I'm like, but whatever. When you're, when the blood's not in your head, you kind of make you know it advised decisions. Anyway, so we start getting on in front of a friend, and I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. We get down in front of a friend. I'm finished. We're done. Cool. I'm a chill it. We're watching a film now, and I say to her, I'm like, yo. I don't think her guy's coming. You should have said I would have called one of my friends. Like, I feel bad for her. And she said, no, no, it's, it's all right. She's okay. Like, it, it doesn't matter. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, cool. And like, when we was getting on as well, like, I see a friend peep. I see a friend looking. I'm like, whatever. It is what it is. Anyway, um, so we're ready to go for round two. And she just, she's just there. She just play with me. And she's like, oh, my gosh. Look at the size of it. I can't believe this fits in me. She's like, I can't believe it. And she's like, hey, girl, look how big this is. Like, I can't believe it. And I'm just like, what? Like, okay. She comes over. Her friend comes over. She's like, oh, she's like, wow. And proper examine it. You know, like, you know, like how that like, scientists, they examine stuff. She was like, examine stuff. And the next thing I know, she puts her mouth over it. I was like, whoa, no, wait, Zach. Like, a small part of me is thinking, is she going to have that? I said, wait, hold on. And then it dawned on me, wait, no, she wanted this. She set this up. And then, yeah, threes. Like, for the, like I said, I never knew how to orchestrate that. Get two girls that like me, that are cool with me. I never thought, but then, yeah, they set that up. It happened. Yeah, and it's done. It's just one of those things done. It's not like, like it wasn't bad or anything like that. It was just uh fantasy fulfilled. And it's not like I have something next, no. Just see what life brings me. An unusual place. Uh, like, do you know what's like what's unusual to me is just like a normal place to have sex. Like I thought like sits in a car was an unusual place. Um I think the very first time I got tints on my car, I felt, all right, cool. Now I've got tints in the car, I can have sets in the car. 
um, it was crazy because it was like daytime as well. But I get tips in the car, the windows get fucked up, boom, like, yeah, and it was just, but now that sits in the car is just like, oh, okay, yeah, it's just, it's not really unusual. So I feel like, I didn't know how many people had sits in the car. I feel like it's just, yeah. Um, but that said, um, I don't know if I can say this. I mean, he knows. He knows. Yeah, he knows. All right, so we was at a social setting. I'm not going to say what kind of social setting. And I disappeared with um, my partner at the time to do whatever in it. And yeah, but it was very much a public social setting and everything. And yeah. So that, yeah, in public, that was the most unusual place we had set. I can't really speak on it because it's actually real bad. It's real bad as well. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, public setting, gone. Um, it was some time after that, that my boy, he come up to me, he goes, hey, where did you and so-and-so go? And I, did you do such and such? And I was like, yeah. I was like, how did you know? Is that fam? It was so obvious. And very, I thought it was so discreet and stuff. like that. like, I'm just gonna run to my car real quick, did it, did it, whatever she said, nah. But yeah, nah, he he clicked on. I think it's because he knows me and it knows that, uh, yeah, what I get up to. I, I kind of stole this one from uh, OT show, my wife and my wife and kids. Um, but yeah, when I say mm, cooking, like like and enjoy cooking as well, so like. Not, 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 not cooking, maybe baking, because baking actually got to admit something you got to add to and stuff. And when I see you're cooking, I'm not, not. I kind of, you, do you know what is perv me? Just want to stand behind you while you're cooking and just, and just, yeah, what? If I see women cooking, see women I like cooking, yeah, that's a big turn off. I felt, okay, so, but because I know they like it, I like it. I like licking ears. Ears, you know, where you listen from. Yeah. And not just the wigs, like, like where the hole is as well and whatnot. Yeah. And, uh, if if we're into it and stuff like that, I'm like, stop, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to be, yeah, yeah. I like licking ears. That, if I got a fetish, that would be, I don't even know if that is classed as a fetish, but that's the something weird that I do sometimes from my own tips. I mean, I can say this now because obviously I know I am better than the person I was. Um, I think I was on a cold streak or a flat six months. So I'm in my early 20s. I'm on that like six months, maybe even longer, who knows. And I've had no sex, no, no masturbating, nothing. Um, just happened to be chop it up with something. He's like, oh, you're free, you're free. I was like, all right, cool. Um, let's have sex. And it was bareback. You know that song, pick me up, show me what you got. I don't want no one minute, man. Like, a minute would have been an achievement for me in this situation, I'm telling you. Crows off, trousers down. I just rested it on front, rested it on the front, and I was done. And not only was I done, like, I went lit afterwards, like, lit immediately, that afterwards, was that, do, 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 like, happened, that, just, done, that, just touched it, like, just rested it on the front. She was cool about it. She was so cool about it as well, like, no, like, this is something, like, you, because you know women talk and whatnot, this is something that could have got around, it never went around. Like never went around like, I, like friends or whatever. Like never heard anything from not from my friends, not from my sisters, nobody, nothing. So that's it. What does it put in that? Like, if this doesn't put you off to a set, something's wrong. Like uh, if you smell, I don't know what this is. You're talking about like your, your like your box. But like your armpits, your breath, if there's any kind of smell that's not attractive, like that's this tasteful, like, yeah, I don't want to do this no more. Uh, and I say that, like, I've, 
played like two hours of basketball, sweaty nuts and stuff, paint boom, and I've had sets and stuff like this. It was something that was just accepted and whatnot. And I'm not saying that that was cool or anything, but she did have no complaints. But if the reverse was done to me, like, let's say you just done dance for two hours, you come over to my house, you relate to me, and you're sweaty and you're stale, and I'm like, yeah, yeah cool. Like, I'm not really in the mood right now. That sweat is not that bad. You can just jump in the shower to get up boom, that's your foreplay. But if you've got bad breath, and the things as well is that always manage with the bad breath, they try to kiss you as well. Like, I was like, I was like oh, you don't want to kiss me. I was like, I don't want to say it, but like lick your lips and go like this and understand why I don't want to kiss you. You know, I, I'm getting mad for no reason. That like, it's over. But yeah, bad smell. Bad smell puts me off set. Okay, so this must be like a culture. So I'm a West Indian man, you know. Uh, you go anywhere, any wave, any dance, like you hear this song, no girl dance, sit on Bali, dead. But so yeah, for the longest time, it was just like, no, nah, bun that, we don't do that. We let girl give us head, but we don't give it back. Like, bun that, bun that, nah, nah, nah. But, um, but yeah, I told you, like, licking ears, because the reaction it gets. But the first time I gave my girlfriend, like, when I went down on her, I, I saw, like, I, that's when I started to understand the female body. And I was, I was like, okay, so, like, everything gets a reaction. There's a different, and it the, it turns them on even more, and they start performing, and it's just a better time, man. It's just a better time. But I think that's something a lot of, like, especially when, like, where I grew up and whatnot, my friends, circle of friends I had, that's just something that we just exclusively didn't do. Fast forward 10 years, like, so we're in our teens, early 20s, that yeah, they no one's doing that. Um, but gradually, people start coming out the woodworks, hey, hey, you know, you know, I tried it. It's like, what, sweat up? Me too. It's like, what's up? It's like, like, bro, like, where, where? And it's just, I was like, okay, cool, that's something we've done and whatnot. And yeah, I can't lie. Like, all uh, right, uh, so I will say this, yeah. So I met, I met a girl and, um, she used to say a lot of nasty stuff to bears and whatnot. Um, and she said, I think the best sets in the sets are about restrictions. To me, like, and this was before I ever like, went down on women and whatnot. And she said, the best sets are more about restrictions on that. I didn't understand that at the time. And then, okay, so then you know that I lick ears or whatnot now, yeah. Start licking ears, you start going down on them try different positions, different locations, and it's like, okay, so it's like, the more you do, the better the experience is, and, but that only comes with comfortability. Like, the first person I went down on was my girlfriend, you know, I, I built a level of comfortability with that, and then after her, I didn't go down on no one else, because I wasn't comfortable with anybody else. As time went on, I became more comfortable within myself. I was like, yeah, cool. Like, how can we have good sex unless we do that? And then, so now it's just like, yeah, this is what I do. Anyway, the girl that said, sets without, best sets is sets without restriction, da da da, met. And it's like, oh, you do that now? Just looked at me, just gave you the other. I was like, I was like yeah, it doesn't, like, it's just normal. You can't have sex. But when I told you that, I was like, yeah, I was a little boy then. We had sex. I went down, her eyes were back. That's where she actually tried to push me away. Stop, stop. Yeah. So I have a friend. Um, I'm not going to say her name, but her name is a city, famous city in the world. Anyway, so we're chilling, we're chopping up, and we're talking and whatnot. And she's telling me about whatever and she said yeah she tried to peg it what is that yeah she tried to peg it anyway so peg is when she wears a strap on raises her man and then up his bum now i know i said the best sets is the sets about restriction but i think i don't even so yeah if there's anything i never do in my life, it will be that. Like, they say, no, never say never. This is like, you no, know, like, why would that? And 
the excuses or reasons behind it, it, it gets even worse. Like, it's not gay because she's a woman. I'm like, she's wearing the body part of a man. Like, it is what it is. Listen, like, I'm not judging anyone and their sexual fantasy session, but so, like, to you, from like, to a lot of people, it could be like, Given head is a black, oh my gosh, that's so disgusting. Like, even like casual sets might disgust people, isn't it? But again, I'm not one to judge, in it? To each his own. But for me personally, no, I ain't never in no way in my life I'm gonna bend over on all fours, let my girl put a strap on and pen it. No, sorry, no. Um, King's a tricky one. Um, like, when I was younger, I used to watch porn and not beat my meat. And whatnot. Um, I didn't know that's what was that was what was porn was meant for. Um, when I say young, I'm talking like I said, I used to watch Know Each Other. I was like seven and all of those things. Um, when I got into a relationship, I've only ever watched porn with one person. It was my girlfriend. Like uh, we was chilling and whatnot. And it's like, oh, right, like. I don't know, I think you just mad at each other. You're just in a bad space and so sex weren't happening and whatnot. And then the conversation is like, oh, why don't we have a sex and stuff? And it's like, all right, cool, let's spice it up. So we put porn on one. Like, yeah, it kind of is what it is with me. Um, alone, if I do, if I am watching porn, like, so, like, as I've grown up now, as a child, I used to watch it, not being really. If I watch it now, then you know what I'll Um... I don't think there's anything specific I type, you know. Um, do you know what it is? That porn is like women. I don't really have a type. Like, if you look aesthetically pleasing and, like, you're cooperative, every man in the porn site is cooperative. You know, if you want to give a head, you go to the pet party. You want to do this, you do yeah, Everyone on porn site is cooperative. But as long as you do those things, it will get the job done. Um, filthiest porn I've watched... Um, this was a video that I passed around when we was in school and whatnot. Yeah, it's called Two Girls, One Cup. Ain't no lack. If you ain't seen it, I highly advise you not to see it. Because once you see it, you can't unsee it. I mean, as soon as I say Two Girls, One Cup to anyone that's seen before, the face is like, nah, no, nah, nah, no part. But yeah, that was the filthiest porn I watched. But um, I didn't know it was porn. I thought it was just something disgusting. But again, as you get older and you start seeing that, I've seen a horse, I've seen a woman have sex with a horse. Um, oh my gosh, what else? I've seen that's crazy, man. I've seen that all years and stuff. That's not really crazy though. I think that's just people comfortable having sex in the same room as another person. That's not really mad. But yeah, the nasty thing is like the animal porn, uh, people pooing, pee, pissing on each other and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, yeah. I'm trying to think, who beats your meat to two girls on one cup? Like, I know they're naked in it. But yeah. Porn is a messed up thing, you know, when you think about it. Do you know what? It brings me back, though. I think that people just have particular fetishes and whatnot. I've seen, oh, this is the craziest porn. So, um, you know the dominate, domin, dominatrix type people and whatnot? Okay, so there's this guy, he's tied up and his balls are out of a hole. They're sticking out of a hole right now. This girl is wearing stiletto heels. And just stomping on his nuts like this. I'm like, yeah, that, that, right. I don't even know how that's porn. And then to anyone watching, how do you get off watching that? Like, but yeah, these type of videos that just get passed around WhatsApp groups and whatever. It's like, you see that. Well, I saw that. Yeah, that was mad.